What's going on everyone and welcome to Poppy TV. I'm your host Poppy and welcome to another episode where you see Okinawa through my eyes. So guys, I've been trying to do this video for days now, but it's been raining like constantly, constantly for the past, I want to say three or four days, just raining, raining, raining. My car is pretty much my studio, so it is what it is. I finally got a break, so I figured let me knock this video out real quick. So today we're going to talk about Hogan or Uchinaguchi, right? So Hogan, as it's colloquially known, is Okinawan language or dialect, right? So for those who don't know, even though Okinawa is a part of Japan, it is more like the Hawaii of Japan, right? Just like how in Hawaii, a lot of the natives there have their own language, they have the Hawaiian language and whatnot, their own culture before America annexed it. So does the history is similar to the Ryukyus where Japan annexed Okinawa back when Okinawa was the Ryukyu kingdom. I believe the first time it was annexed or when it was officially annexed by Japan was in 1879 by the Satsuma clan. So Uchinaguchi or Okinawan language is an umbrella term for a multitude of different dialects spoken in different regions of Okinawa. Um, I, I'm, I'm only familiar with the, um, the Shuri or Naha variant, which is pretty much a de facto variant or the de facto Okinawan language that was established by um, King Shoshin of the Sho dynasty um, back in, I want to say 1477 and if you would know that you would know about the show dynasty if you did follow my channel and watch some of my videos and you can see the link right here so as i said before there are different variants that are spoken in different um regions i know there's a distinct northern version and there's a southern version so okinawan language or uchinaguchi is very distinct and sounds way different than average japanese I know a couple words, for instance, um, thank you in Japanese is arigato gozaimasu, but thank you in Uchinaguchi is, is, uh, nifi debiru. So it's, it's totally different, but Japanese in its current iteration and Uchinaguchi derive from the same ancestor and it's believed that between 1st AD and 12th AD, that's when they begin to diverge, right? So going back in a little history of it, Uchinoguchi, you know, when Ryukyu Kingdom was its own independent kingdom, own independent um state, um, a lot of Uchinoguchi was written in um hiragana. A lot of the literature and the spoken words that was written in hiragana. And then in 1879, when the, when the Satsuma clan came and uh, annexed Okinawa, when Okinawan language began to be suppressed because for mainland Japanese. It was thought of like, you know, it's native language. It's not proper Japanese. It's it's not Japanese at all, right? rather, but it's not proper. Like, you know, they're a, now a territory of Japan, so they should be speaking only Japanese. And I think the Satsuma clan at that point was pretty much a part of the, was based in Kagoshima, I believe, Kagoshima. And um, the heads of there became like, you know, the administration in Okinawa. And they began to like, you know, suppress Okinawan language and propagate Japanese in literature, media, in schools, education, and whatnot. I think during World War II, after America took Okinawa as a territory, I think General MacArthur actually began to try and promote Okinawan language. But then after Japan took back um, possession of Okinawa from America to Japan around the 70s, they, you know, once again began to suppress Okinawan language. And now, now pretty much only elderly people, people know and speak Uchinaguchi to each other, um, people my age, may understand it may not know how to speak it well and i think as generations go on uchinoguchi might be risked maybe in risk of being endangered because the only time uchinoguchi is really spoken is in cultural um events like in like in um asa in asa dances and i think in some shows that i've seen a couple of times on okinawa local tv 
Like I've seen some certain animations that are spoken in Uchinoguchi, but other than that, you you barely hear it. It's pretty sad. And Hogan kind of resonates with me because it's kind of similar to uh, the Jamaican uh, dialect, right? Or Patois, as they call it. I mean, I don't really speak it because, you know, they don't really, uh, there's not much Jamaicans here anyways, but it's kind of similar because even though, you know, Hogan isn't, Hogan or Uchinoguchi isn't spoken, Okinawa has a particular accent, right? Like, you know, people will say in Okinawa, like, eto sa, ano sa, and stuff like that. That sa is like, it's kind of like, oh, that, that person is Okinawan, you know, when they speak. So I was almost going off on a tangent. So pretty much like the reason why I say it resonates with me because in Japan, from what I've heard, um, the reason why Uchinoguchi isn't spoken as much is because in greater Japanese culture, and again, if you watch my videos, you'd understand what I'm talking about. In greater J Japanese society, everything is about saving face, preventing haji, right? Everything is about saving face, preventing haji. So now, Uchinoguchi in greater J Japanese society, if I was to speak it, it would be considered rude, right? It would be, co it would be considered shameful because that's not proper Japanese, you know what I mean? And in Japan, everything is about being, you know, polite, saving face, preventing haji, right? And that, and that supersedes almost everything. That's why in public, Japanese people act a certain way, they do things in a certain way in, in greater society. That's why you'll never hear Uchinoguchi in like casual conversation, as opposed to when I grew up in Jamaica, you will see people like speaking, you know, Jamaican Creole among themselves or whatever, except for like, you know, news networks or like, you know, media and stuff. You wouldn't hear people speak like Creole unless it's like cultural. Same kind of thing like in uh, in Okinawa. You wouldn't hear people speak Jamaican uh, Patois in, in, uh, in media and stuff. But like among, you know, general society, people speak uh, Jamaican Creole either way. But then again, the dynamic is kind of different because, you know, in Jamaica, we're, you know, a former English colony, you know, or Jamaica is an independent country now. So, you know, people speak whatever they want. But Japan or Okinawa, rather, is a territory and has been for like years now. So I guess they kind of have to get with the program in uh, greater Japanese society. But it's it's kind of it's kind of sad because, you know, Hogan or Uchinoguchi is very much a part of Okinawan culture. Uh, you know, I, I I love languages, even though I I don't really speak Japanese very well. Um, I like dabbling in different languages because I because I think that's the very heartbeat of culture and history of people is in their language, right? But uh, I think there are two great uh, Okinawan people. I think uh, I think one is called. Uh, I think one is called Mr. Byron Fija, and I think another one. I think he died, uh, Mr. Uh, Noborikawa. I think I think Mr. Byron Fija is just a, a Okinawan language expert, and uh, Mr. Noborikawa was a musician, Okinawan musician. Both of these Okinawans were very influential in Okinawan culture and history, and um, they tried to like you know educate people on Hogan and Uchinoguchi and uh it's great man i just wish that uh it was more it was spoken more it wasn't until like you know i was in the civilian phase of living in okinawa and i got to interact more with okinawans that i kind of picked up on hogan i've heard bits and pieces of it in there when i was uh still you know active duty but now it's kind of like oh so this is Hogan, and this is what this means, and this is why, you know, Okinawan sound the way they do, and this is what this means, you know? So it's it's pretty insightful. It hits home, because uh, sometimes I kind of lose uh, my Jamaican uh, dialect too, because I don't really have anyone to speak it out here. But uh, yeah, it's, it's very important culturally. Uh, right now, Uchinoguchi is actually considered an endangered language. I really hope in the future that it doesn't become extinct. I might try to learn some Hogan too. 
as, alongside with Japanese, my Japanese studies, so I think it's pretty cool. But yeah, I just wanted to rant about uh, Uchinoguchi and Hogen, trying to get it out there, bring some awareness to people who may not know it, or may not know about it, or may know a little bit about it. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for today. Remember to stay blessed and stay tuned. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.